All right, for this example, we're going to be looking at a billiards collision, bird's eye view looking down. Ball one is coming in at 3.5 meters per second, hitting ball two initially stationary. Ball two goes up and off at an angle, which we don't know what it is. Ball one goes downwards at an angle of 15 degrees with a velocity of 3.1 meters per second. Ball one has a mass of 155 grams. Ball two has a mass of 52 grams. So what I want to do is take a look at what's happening to ball one after the interaction, and I'm going to find the components, which will be the X component and the Y component of its velocity. So here we are. The hypotenuse is 3.1 meters per second. We have an angle of 15. So this piece right here is the X component. It's going to be 3.1 cos of the angle of 15, so 2.994 meters per second. The Y component pointing down will be negative, so it's 3.1 times the sine of 15, which gives us negative 0.8023 meters per second. So we know that momentum is conserved in these interactions. We're going to start off by looking at the X component. So I've just listed them all. Ball 1 times its initial velocity plus ball 2 times its initial velocity. Ball 2 was initially at 0, so we can make that go away. Is equal to ball 1 times its velocity after the collision plus ball 2 times its velocity after the collision. So the mass of ball 1 is 0.155 kilograms. The initial velocity is 3.5 meters per second. Ball 1, 0.155 kilograms. The velocity after the collision was 2.994 meters per second. Here is the mass of ball 2, and we don't actually know the velocity in the x direction of ball 2, so that's our unknown. So now let's do a little bit of math. Multiply these two terms, it gives me 0.5425, and the units are kilogram meters per second. Multiply these two terms, you get 0.4641. Again, it's kilogram meters per second. And this final term, we're just going to leave it. Do our subtraction. We end up getting 0 0.0784 kilogram meters per second on the left-hand side. Okay, so now let's divide both sides by 0 0.0520 kilograms. And on the right-hand side, that goes away, and now we're just left with 0 0.0784 kilogram meters per second divided by 0 0.0520 kilograms. The kilograms will cancel off, and we'll be left with a velocity, and that velocity is 1.5077 meters per second. And this right here is our final velocity of ball 2 in the x direction. Now we're going to look at the y components. So here was ball 1 coming in at 3.5 meters per second. It's actually coming in along the x-axis. Ball 2 is not moving whatsoever. Ball 1 ends up having a y component of negative 0.8023 meters per second, but we don't know anything about the y component of ball 2. Okay, the conservation of momentum says m1v1y plus m2v2y will be equal to m 1v1y prime plus m2v2y prime. There is no motion in the y direction for the interaction, which means both of those terms are going to go to zero. So that simplifies that equation substantially. So we can rewrite it with the zero on the left-hand side. m1, 0.155 kilograms, v1y prime was negative 0.8023 meters per second. M2 was 0 0.0520 kilograms, and we don't know V2Y prime. So now if we take these two terms and multiply them together, we'll get negative 0.1244 units kilogram meters per second. Let's add that to both sides. Okay, so if we add to both sides, we get 0.1244 kilogram meters per second on the left side. We've got this term on the right. So now we divide both sides by 0.0. 520 kilograms. On the right hand side they go away and on the left hand side we can do this division and when we divide both sides by the 0 0.0520 kilograms we get V2Y prime is 2.391 meters per second. So we've now found the two components of V2 prime. So now that we have the components for V2 to prime, we can solve for it. So here's what we just determined. We know that V2x prime was 1.5077, which is this vector. 
V2Y prime was 2.391 meters per second, so it's going vertically up. The hypotenuse will be the vector V2 prime. And if we actually take this and move it up to our original diagram, we can see that we're actually solving for V2 prime, and then we want to solve for the angle theta. So it's a right angle triangle. We're just going to use Pythagorean theorem. So the vector V2 prime is equal to the square root of 2.391 meters per second squared plus 1.5077 meters per second squared. And when we do that calculation, we get V2 prime is the square root of 7.9900 meters squared per second squared. And taking the square root gives us 2.8266 meters per second. So that is the magnitude of the vector. We also need to find the angle. So here was our triangle. We're trying to solve for theta right here. This is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. So we're going to be using tan. So tan of theta is 2.391 meters per second divided by 1.5077 meters per second. And that gives you tan of theta is equal to 1.5858 repeated. Take the second function or inverse of tan and that gives you 57.76. So we know the magnitude of the hypotenuse. We now solve for the angle. So our final answer is going to be rounded to three sig digs, 2.83 meters per second. Now this vector is denoted as east, but then it's 57.8 degrees towards the north. So V2 prime is 2.83 meters per second, east 57.8 degrees north.